called the champ. And now from one trumpet player to another, or would-be trumpet player, I guess, <laughs> he is looking a little bit bronzed. Well, a lot bronzed, really. He's just come back from a week away in Venice. John Walters, welcome back to Radio 1. Oh, thank you. And I've been looking forward oh, to seeing you again because yeah. I know that you've brought me something because every time you oh. go away, you always bring me a little something, a little souvenir, a little gift. So what have you brought me, eh? <laughs> oh, come on then. Okay, I can't get it. Look at that. Biscuits I saw... Next door, in the shop next door where I bought the water, biscuits, they've got a big Union Jack, they've got Snoopy on the front, and you teach yourself. They, look, they've got, there's Snoopy, there's Charlie Brown, and they've got the same word, there's Sacchetto, bag, carne, dog. And it's written on each biscuit, you can open it, and there's English and Italian words and a picture of Snoopy on each biscuit, OK? Hey, thank you. And now I guess my kids can learn to speak Italian. No. No, I just thought as a Scottish-Canadian DJ, you should learn to speak English. Ooh. Oh! Back. Okay, come on, let's get going, because Venice is a very strange place to go. I went two years ago for Walters Weekly for the Biennale. That's every two years the big international art Olympics, you know, that takes place there. Put the biscuits down and stop trying to learn Italian. Let's <laughs> <laughs> all learn English either. So uh, this year, time I thought, well, I'll go back, you know, I'll have a, a holiday, because Venice is a very strange and captivating, dreamlike place, and I can illustrate that. As we go. Anyway... You'll soon see, when I get to the end, what a strange tale. Anyway, I set off and I was staying somewhere. I won't tell you the real name, obviously, you know, because I don't want to get sued in Venetian, whatever it is, but a place called, let's say, call it the Casa di Spaghetti. It was the Casa di something else. So we arrive in the night and we get off the boat. It's just off the Grand Canal. We walk down this little alleyway, you know, this damp little alleyway. And the missus says, is this, is this where it is, the, the, the Casa that we're staying at? I said, oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, I said, look, I've been here before. I speak a little Italian. It's the Casa, the Casa. It's not the Casa. You have one of those days when you feel you spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. wait till we got in there. Oh, boy. Um, everywhere's crumbling in Venice. You know, it's just sinking slowly into the sea, you know. So I get in there, they take us up to the room through a very pleasant sort of, mm, you know, sort of, whatever you call it, a salon or something, a great big sitting room that that's really looks, you know, 17th century kind of thing. Paintings, cracked up old paintings on the wall and things. As you walk across, of course, you're walking across the floor, they say, oh, this way is toilet there, is a bath there. And as you walk across, well, the windows are rattling. I'm just walking over the floor. You think, wee -hee. <laughs> hold on. Now, they show you where everything, as soon as you get the toilet, open the toilet, the toilet, the catch, you know, because, as you because what, they've got water. Plenty of water in Venice. No shortage of water. Venice <laughs> water's all right. They've got any oil. Straight away. The, the, whole, the house is falling slightly to one side, so that the, the, the door is wedged. Do you know what I mean? When you've either got to have that toilet door open or closed. And if it's closed, you've got to... And it comes open and you step inside. Slot it, and then the key. So then you, when you come, want to come out... <laughs> then you walk up the stairs. <laughs> Every step, no carpets, no nothing. You think, oh, boy, you know. And Venetian painting, they say it's dead. Not dead in my room, he painted over my number. Somebody had been round there, splish, splash, paint all over the... Obviously, tourist season, quick bucket of paint, flip, flop, flip, flop. Ah, oh, what can you do? It was lit by what appeared to be... Do you know one of those, like, cut glass marmalade jars? Do you know what I mean? That was, like, over a light bulb, over the sink, you know? What could you do? The, the, the floors were at such an angle. That the beds were slightly sideways, but the beds were at an angle. <laughs> the snag was to get in bed, like to, to lie down in bed. Okay, darling, she's over in her little bed, and I'm over in mine. You've got to cling on. You know, it's that kind of thing. Otherwise, you zoop, slide down <laughs> to the floor. I mean, it's crazy. Imagine that sort of. Well, here we are at last to begin our holiday in Venice, darling. We're clinging on to the bed. Are you all right, darling? Yes, my knuckles are going white, but I'm, I'm clinging on. Well, of course, it wasn't too bad, because, you know, every hour or so you could get up for a rest. You know, you sort of <laughs> walk round the room, you know, get a bit of a breather. By the dawn, all these people have been out, they turn up for the festival, a few beers till midnight, you know, and then they come back in. People start to get up and go to the toilet. Only one toilet in the place. You can hear them coming. You think, what's that? So the bottom of my stairs. <laughs> they enter to the door. <laughs> lock it in. You feel like saying, feel like shouting, I'm not coming down the stairs. Don't lock the door. Please, sir. I'm trying to get to sleep up here. <laughs> Floss. <laughs> <laughs> There's some bit five o'clock in the morning. Even worse than that, it wakes up the bloke in the next room. There's only at the top of our staircase were two little rooms. Number it, well, it looks like number eleven if the Venetian painter hadn't, you know, some, slapped his brush over it. And number ten, presumably, was the next one. And then just the corridor and the stairs creak down to the toilet. You see, he wakes up. I know he wakes up because as soon as he wakes up, I can hear everything through the wall. And it's one of these guys who goes. <sighs> 
I can hear him doing that. Then he starts to go. Then he starts to sneeze. And he's one of these guys, he doesn't make a just sneeze, he makes like a you know, hallelujah chorus out of it. It's like, I mean, it's a very, very sensitive and intellectual turn. You could tell it was a sneeze by Monteverdi or something like that. It was a, what's that? Uh, oh. <laughs> then he gets up, sits up in bed, I need everything, I'm lying there. <laughs> walk, walk, walk over the floor. <laughs> he goes to look out of the window. Yep, the canal's still there, back to bed. <laughs> Into bed. <laughs> Right, then he gets up, starts flushing in the sink. The sink's going. <laughs> no, not what you're thinking, because he went down again to the toilets. This guy locks himself in his room, locks himself in. So he. <laughs> this is next door to me. <laughs> Opens the door. Locks it, locks it, just to go to the toilet. <laughs> down the stairs. <laughs> Getting a little bit softer, but not much. <laughs> Into the toilet, nothing. It's ten past five. <laughs> what did I die? And then he comes back, he runs the sink again. He starts to move the furniture around. In the morning, I said to the missus, wait, she wakes up about half six, and then as she slept through this, I said, Can you hear what's going on? It's been going on like perpetual motion all night. I said, Look, it sounds as if he's training a seal. Next door, he's getting the water out of the sink. It's wetting it. You know, you have to keep them damp like <laughs> whales and things. He's splashing this damn thing. <sighs> what could I do? He goes out at six. I thought, he's gone out. Oh, clank, key, open, key, close. Clank, down the stairs. <coughs> out he goes. Oh, I go to sleep. Ten minutes later, <coughs> he comes back. I said, Missy, I know what he's been doing. He's been to get the early catch as the fishermen come in. He's got it for the seal. He's got like, these herrings and things going into that room. And I thought, oh, boy, you know. <laughs> so we went out. We walked out. We went out and had a coffee, you know, at about 11 o'clock. And my missus said, good job you're with me. She said, all these little squares look the same. There's a little fountain, a little square, these little passages. You know, it's all Venice, you know. She said, I'd never find my way back to the hotel. I said, find your way back? Sit here a minute. You'll see some bloke walking by with a set of bagpipes with a book under his arm saying, piping by night for amateurs. He's going to lead you to the room next door to us. <laughs> Art, as always, that's why we went, for the art, you see. Being the Italians, the art is closed. Usual thing, you think, oh, come on, what are you saying? We've got all these official passes and that sort of thing. Half the things you turn up and there's, like, the Canadian pavilion. Well, I better not say that, because you've been partly Canadian. Whatever you're not part, anyway, the Venezuelan pavilion. You think, what is this? It's interesting work in wood and what... Just crates. Just crates. The pictures have just arrived. They just got, nobody's unpacked them yet. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's sawing everywhere. <laughs> It's like, I think, is it the guy? Is he, is he following me about, this guy? Saw, 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 saw. They're still painting the place. I mean, you think, really, this is... But the official British one was opened and really looked very good. It's like a little temple, you know. It's been there since about 1902 or something like that. It's on top of a hill. Always looks good. Um, they got it uh, uh, just painted out, just big, plain open rooms and these um, relatively small paintings by Howard Hodgkin, abstract paintings on the wall. He'd stipulated, like most galleries have white painted, white walls, you know, so the painted. His was painted in what you might call sort of watercress soup colour, do you know what I mean? Sort of O'Neill. All the walls were painted light green. And somebody said, you know, afterwards, somebody told me, they said, because you know why he had that done? Because he works at home in something like the bathroom or the, or the, or the kitchen or something, and that's the colour that, he, that they're against, do you know what I mean? So he said, well, do the whole exhibition like that. So that seemed to be, uh, you know, good reason as any. <laughs> everybody liked it, everybody thought it was very good. It looked very dignified compared with a lot of the work that was around there, believe me. Once you get outside the official park, there's a sort of fringe area. Do you know what I mean? There are a lot of people who want to get seen by critics. They're selected, but they're not, you know, their country's representative. You know, they're like a... a not fringe, you know, in a sense. They're not unofficial, but they're, they're sort of all tucked away in little less space for themselves. They're not so lucky. There's a guy there called Paul Richards, who's a, a painter I've seen met before. He might as well... I mean, he said to me, he said, oh, I'm a bit worried about my work, you know, it doesn't look... I said, it's fine, fine, Paul, forget it. Looks as though it's in a coal house, frankly. I hope he's not listening. But, I mean, you know, it's so dark because they, they put a lot of this stuff in warehouses and cellars. The Italians have got... Either, some of them have got no windows. So you've got strip lighting up in the roof somewhere, you know. Mm. I mean, it's quite crazy what they've got. One person there, her little space, like, you know, about 12 feet square or whatever it was, she got no paintings in it, no nothing. She just cut a hole in the wall and put behind it a red light, like there's one little red square of light beaming out. You could go and be lit up at it. I mean, it looked loony as a piece of art, but in fact it was the only way that, that actually used the space. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, frankly, what else could you do? You at least wanted to see it. 
Uh, guy, a young British critic, actually selected most of the sort of fringe stuff from all the countries, which was quite an honour, I suppose, for the sort of British art world. John Roberts, very intelligent laddo, who picked some good stuff. Uh, Kerry Trangrove, who's been on uh, um, Saturday Live. Um, Rose Garrod, who's been on, on my show a year or two ago, Walters Weekly. Another young guy, Anthony Reynolds, had picked some stuff, and he got a, a, a church of his own. It's not, you know, sort of, not, not a church, it's what they call a scholder. I suppose it's a sort of guild hall or something like that that he'd taken over, you know, very ancient, sort of medieval-looking building. <laughs> that looked very good. Uh, a painter called Paula Rigo got a lot of stuff there, and it'd be nice to see more of her on a more official level in the future. Um, Sylvia Zironic, who we've played a piece of hers on here, she did that cookery thing, she did a oh, yeah. pink performance. And then there's a bloke called Gerald Newman who did a, a, a sound art piece and it was all sort of you know we all sat in this echoey churchy thing and it's whoosh 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 and then voices coming over and after that it said on the piece of paper it's going to be 20 minutes after about 12 minutes it starts to fade away Valdemar Janacek the young critic from the Guardian leaps up at the front starts to applaud wildly as he fades away sort of Aah! and everybody starts to applaud and because he has to come out and say it's not finished yet <laughs> so when he got to the end nobody applauded it's like going out to do your Shakespeare in Venice and saying and sort of to be ah, quiet or not to be, and forget it, you've spoiled the line now. <laughs> <laughs> the Italians have, have gone back to doing look, look, what looked like sort of joke versions of old Italian painting, you know what I mean? The one, one guy had done a great big a marble a fountain, you know, with a great big god thing sitting on it, you know, I mean, perfectly realistic, and sort of some sort of half-baked form. This is all life-size things, bigger than life-size. Great big monstrous things full of water. You know, people had actually started to throw coins in. You know, I wish this is true. The critics are going around throwing coins and say, I wish this wasn't here, you know, for a start. <laughs> but uh, it looked like something out of a really opulent garden centre. But the interesting thing, while well, we're just finishing off the art world, is, is what's well, the interesting thing? I mean, what gave it a lot more life, one of John Roberts' choices, was to bring in the American graffiti artists, or some of them. And so they were in there spraying, spraying on the wall and spraying around, you know, all bits and bobs. One being um, Keith Haring, who's now becoming a well-known figure in his own right. He's the guy who did, I'm old enough for the people at town, the Malcolm McLaren album, the Duck Rock, all that oh, yeah. stuff in the background, all those figures that fall in. Malcolm McLaren quickly picked him up. I don't know whether they ever paid him, but he picked it up. And now he's becoming quite internationally known. He was in there with a great big, you know, ghetto blaster. He's up a ladder painting it. We're all coming around criticising it. He's painting it. But, you know, it did give it a little bit of life. Another guy sat there next to his things, which were kind of like, you know, realistic, normal things, with great big cartoon figures slapped on front of him. And he quickly, do you want a poster? I said, well, yes, why not? He said, give me a poster. He said, OK, I'll sign the poster. What is it? John Walters from Ronnie Catrone. That's how you pronounce it. Like Capone. I thought, I see, like Capone. Oh, yes. I said, I'll, I'll take it back. I'll open it up. There it is, a great big... Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, I thought, I'd better not refuse. You know, he's going to be an artist who's going to make me offer that I can't refuse. He did look good. At least it looked very exciting, you know, the American stuff. It, was, it, it gave it a lot of lift, particularly against the Italians. And um, I felt sorry for the the. Americans particularly, because they seemed lost in Venice. There's no streets. There's no cars. It's not like New York at all. And you could say they were yearning for the sound of the motor horn. McDonald's, you know, the essential America. Not Venice at all. So for them, I'll play something from an artist who wasn't there, just a short thing from Wendy Chambers. It's the Star Spangled Banner played on the motor horn. Mm -hmm -hmm. For all the American artists there, but we carry on. <laughs> that was Wendy Chambers playing the Star Spangled Banner, of course. She wasn't an artist who was there, but the spirit was there, I'm sure. Food! Because, of course, you go to Venice. Mm. I was on holiday. I was going to eat out. Nom, nom. All the, all the menus there have got something. All the menus there have got, got something. They've translated it. Either it's wrongly written or it's badly translated from, like, a German dictionary or something. On one menu, I saw fired potatoes. You think, fired potatoes? And then there was capricious salad, <laughs> which was really good, sort of capricious. They got it, like, mixed salad in the German, like, mist or whatever it is. You know, but capricious salad in the English one. And then I was right down by one of the, the gondola things. You know, we were sitting there with having a romantic evening and sort of, ah, oh, sit there. And blah, 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 blah. I looked down the menu and I said, I thought, oh, some pasta. And I looked down at the English translation of whatever it was they were going to give me. And it said, large hoodles. I thought, Large noodles. <laughs> Obviously, they mean large noodles. They've got it out of the dictionary, right? So you feel like saying, to them, "Come on, then, give me, give me the large hoodles. <laughs> I'll, I'll have them." They open the kitchen door. Quick, <laughs> 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 jump in the canal. I know and all that. But the best one, there was a guy. I, I could see there was something being eaten at the next table. You know, and it was a kind of 
blacky sauce, you know, with, with tentacles and things all that, you know, like a sort of octopusy thing, you know. But it looked really interesting. And a guy was eating it, and I said, excuse me, what is, what is that? What is... Me? Oh, uh, bring my son, Giovanni. He, he will tell you. He, sp he speaks English, obviously. He's the big thing. The son spoke English. Out they come, Giovanni comes out. Yes, see? So I said, what is that food there? So I said, oh, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, so I said, is it squid? No, no, it's not, it's not squid. So I said, is it, um, ink fish? No, no, it's not squid. It's not ink fish. It's, uh, squonk. <laughs> So I said, bring me the squonk. Why not? I mean, I like nothing else. One of my favourite English dishes, so I ate squonk that night. More mystery. I was coming back. I left the missus having a coffee. I went to get the English papers and sort of walked to St Mark's. I got the boat back, you know, chug, 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 you know, and the little bus thing. And I looked out right at the front of this big church salute, right in the middle of, of the, the, uh, the water thing there, you know, the lagoon. I suddenly saw... And somebody else was sitting there, an English woman, talking to a friend. She said, oh, I've never seen that before. She said, that's really English, it, really interesting. She said, that gold statue is there, you know, and this... I thought, I've never seen that either. And uh, larger than life, because I could see, like, ordinary people standing around, there was this gold statue with its arm upraised like a, a salute kind of thing, you know, just standing there with, like, a black head and black hands and gold just standing there with this rather strange long coat on just standing there. And I thought, that's really interesting. I know, must be the doge or something like that, you know, wedding the sea to Venice. You know, it's one of these customary things. I said to the missus, cut a long story short, when we go for a walk, for lunch, we walk round there. I'd like to look at this statue. I've never seen it in any book before. We walk round there. Gone. <laughs> Great big statue, no statue. I said, I, sh I assure you, there was a statue. She says, OK, there was a gold statue with a black head. He says, yeah, let's go and sit down and have another beer. I said, look, there was a statue. <laughs> I tell you, there was a statue. I started to get really ratty. Ooh, you know, I was, and I was asking people at the ambassador's party. The ambassador's party. Nobody knew about this statue. Art experts said, a golden statue at the point of salute? No, I don't think. I said, I saw the statue. Because it was very nice of the ambassador and the British Council and so on. They throw a party for all the artists. And, of course, the artists... You and me, we're used to record company life and this sort of thing. Over the years, you get invited out to a lot of things, you know, and there's, hey, there's a few drinks put on for the Beach Boys or whatever it's visiting, you know, that kind of thing. The art world's a bit different. Of course, they move on a higher plane, and you can get people walking into this hotel overlooking the Grand Canal there and all in their suits, shake hands with the ambassador. As we walk in, they're all walking by, you know, and sort of, but Julian, you know, li line and form <laughs> are surely only a visual metaphor. For the concert. Free drinks! Free drinks! <laughs> oh! Oh! Splash a button! <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly all the artists went mad. Free drinks! Finally, the strange tale. The guy next door we thought was doing the seal, right? Yeah. Training a seal. Yeah. By the day three, five o'clock, he's waking me up again. <coughs> up he gets, walks around him. <coughs> I thought, here he goes, set me watch. Where's my watch, darling? Must set it. The man's got up his creaking hands. He's running the sink. Psh, two <laughs> minutes past. He starts to write on the wall, the other w the other side of the wall, you see? So I can hear him, you know, it's like as if we was the other side of the blackboard. I can hear this. I thought, that's it. And she says, don't knock on the door, don't, you don't know what's going to come out of that room. Because yeah. he's, he's locking himself in. And yeah. I can hear him. <coughs> I thought, what is he doing? Strange situation. I, I thought he must, he, presumably he got bits of paper pinned to the wall. And he's doing, whether he's writing, whether he's drawing. Eventually I said, this is crazy. And I heard his key go in the door, right? Yeah. I thought, <coughs> he stopped writing for it. <coughs> I hear him open the door. I said, <coughs> and I got down on one knee and I looked <laughs> through the keyhole. <laughs> Do you know what came out of that room? Go on. The gold statue. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Turned out to be an American artist called James something or other. And he, every morning, he put on this gold suit. He's about six foot four. He put on this gold lame suit. The, the, the suit, the sleeves hung six inches below his out, hands, like, so he looked like something out of a monster film. He had a black scarf over his head, which almost covered his eyes, so he could only just see where he was going. A black top hat on top, black gloves. And he set off at the same time every morning, and he went out to the salute, and he stood, and he just froze there and saluted and stood there. That was his art. He stood for about an hour there. And he was in the next room! <laughs> crashing about. I could have gone right the way through my whole life with saying to people, you know, there really is a different statue there. The gold statue was in the next room to me, coughing, using the sink, going to the toilet, writing on the wall. 
Americans are loony. Actually, just to finish, finally, one American who wasn't loony because I met her and I'd used her work because I'd heard her work as sound artwork. I'd used it on uh, Walters Weekly. And a lot of people wrote in about it. Actually, Mike Reed once played a little bit on The Breakfast Show. I don't know from what spirit. A girl called Connie Beckley. And she got some paintings there, but she works a lot in sound. She was around when Laurie Anderson was starting in, in, in New York. I mean, she, they were starting at the same time, you know. They were both unknown together, as it were. <laughs> they were both infamous together or whatever, the opposite of famous. Very nice uh, girl who I, I met her there, you know, and she, she'd come with her paintings. And I said, well, I have pl played your work on British radio. You know, wow, have you? You know, to Faust, a footnote, it's called. And I said, which bits did you do? She said, I did it all. And it's the strangest piece, and so... For all the artists, I suppose, that I've seen in Venice the last week, here's one who, this isn't a piece of work she had there, because obviously this is in sound, but I thought pff, some of the art people listening might want to listen. I tell you, really does love this work. Cats. My cat loves it. It climbs on the radio, that's true. When that goes, then this goes out, you know, I mean, what, it'll be, hold the cat. Misses at home, hold the cat. Because he's really wanting to get to the radio. Because what it is, there's a, like a mathematical thing that she reads, and she's dubbed over her voice doing a kind of hmm, singing kind of thing and that gradually builds it takes a lot of minutes and you won't have time to play it all but do try and play a bit this is connie beckley to faust a footnote that may always bum, remain given bum, while the bum, former parabola in whose bum, 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 bum. an interesting performance there to be sure from connie beckley and that's called to faust a footnote and John Walters will return Thursday night, 8 o'clock this time, for his weekly review of the Paw Papers. It's 9.30.